And what is up guys, Technical Sneakers, that's right, we have yet another 3D printer to take a look at. This one courtesy of FL Sun, this is their S1 Pro, their Cadillac, their Bentley, their top of the line unit, it's a Delta printer. Uh, if you recall, not long ago I got the T1 Pro from FL Sun, I guess they liked the content that I made with it, so they asked if I wanted to take a look at the S1 Pro, and I said yes, because I'm a say yes kind of guy. So they did ask if I would do an unboxing video, so I'm gonna, I don't really like unboxing videos, I don't know if you do, but uh, I'm gonna unbox it, go through some of the core features of this thing, because this is a very capable printer. It's a very expensive printer, but it is very capable. If you want to check it out, link in the description below over to FL Sun if you want to cop one of these. So I'm going to go through and unbox it. I'm going to try to make it amusing or at least partially entertaining or at least cut in some like audio time lapse or something, some kind of eye candy deal. And once again, if you're not already subscribed to the channel for more content like this, like I said, I don't much care for unboxing videos myself, but I aim to please. All right, so this ships in a very large box. It's about four feet long. It weighs about, I don't even know. I haven't deadlifted it yet, but it's got a little diagram here, how to take it out. All right, so we took out our bits and bobs and it says stand box up with printer and correct upright orientation. I can do that. I am a human. I graduated middle school. I know how to do that. Oh, she's from San Antonio, all right. Removed from plastic bag. All right, well, that's my unboxing video. I'm the technical, see you next time. Just kidding. Yeah, this is a big printer. It's certainly larger than the T1 Pro. It's very tall. I'm not sure how much it weighs. It's got handles built into it. Hmm, say about like 60 pounds, maybe, something like that. I'm going to lift this up onto the desk and I'm gonna cut it out because I don't want you to see me strain. Whew, we're gonna need a bigger boat. All right, so we got the FL Sun S1 Pro all set up and really there's no setup to really even talk about. It's like they said in their pamphlet, 90 something percent assembled, uh, putting the glass panels in and connecting a few things, putting the filament in and running it, uh, run it through its calibration, update the firmware, connect it to the Wi-Fi, and you're really off to the races. Now I used the high speed PLA from FL Sun to print one of the benches, but I wanted to throw something a little more complicated at it for the first print. So I went ahead and did one of these, the Robo Alpaca. This is a Prusa model. Uh, probably we should have done it in something not white PLA because it's kind of hard to see the detail. But this is with no supports. It is a little stringy because I run it hot. I downloaded the profile and put it into my Orca slicer. And so this is just straight out of Orca slicer stock settings. Nothing uh, particularly, you know, hardcore there, but no supports whatsoever. And with the speed of this machine, which it is quick, this was an hour and a half to do this, you know, here on the underside, there's really no issues at all. I'm not seeing much of anything, no ghosting or anything. And again, I'm, uh, my eye is not as trained as some other people's. Uh, other than the stringing from the heat, I mean, it looks great. So who's this machine for? Um, yeah, probably someone like me. Like I like to get things that I know will work for whatever I throw at them. So a lot of machines can't print some of these more exotic materials because they require higher temperature on the nozzle, higher bed temperature, higher chamber temperature, so on and so forth. This machine's kind of got it all packed in there. The only thing I think it's really missing is the build size, but it's a 320 millimeter diameter times 400 and something millimeter tall. So it's a pretty big build plate. It's fast, it's a Delta printer because it's got the three arms. So if you're unfamiliar with those, uh, you know, and you like to tinker with your machines, maybe that's not for you. Uh, you know, I can't really speak to that because, you know, this day and age, it seems to me, 
printers are moving more towards just working out of the box, not really requiring or even wanting you to sort of tinker with them. It's more of a, a game of just replace parts that can be replaced or just get a new printer if you want one, if something catastrophic goes wrong. So the real thing I'm excited about with this printer is the actively heated drying chamber in the top. You notice up top, the filament goes inside the machine. And so it has a heater in there, it has a dryer, it has a little desiccant pod that you put in there. Cause I picked up some of this Polymaker Fibron. This is, I already forgot, it's PA612CF15. So it's carbon fiber in infused. And I got this specifically for this machine to kind of put it through the paces, put it through the test because this filament requires it to be dried out extensively. Now, when I first got this, I put it in my little Sunlu dryer, which tops out at about 50 C. This re requires you to dry it out at a much higher temperature, I believe close to 80. Uh, so this is carbon fiber reinforced. I'm not exactly sure what I need to print that <laughs> needs to be that tough. Maybe something to keep the top button on my shirt buttoned at all times, because you never want your top. But it, people give me crap about that. Why is it there? Why is the button there if you're not meant to use it? Hmm? Checkmate. Anyway, so I'm gonna throw this in the dryer. I'm gonna look up the spec on how long it needs to dry. I'm gonna throw it in there, really, really dry this out and then find something, I guess, you know, maybe a part for the lawnmower, a part for the tractor, something that is gonna be, you know, have demands placed on it, something that you don't want to break, or maybe just a sample model, maybe another uh, alpaca and I can run over it with my truck to test it out. Uh, but overall, the point is, is that this machine can do it. And you'll notice I'm wearing a glove handling this stuff. I've heard before, you can let me know in the comments about it, but you know, carbon fiber reinforced filaments, a lot of people saying that they leave trace amounts on your skin. It gets embedded in your skin, things like that, because I want to touch my PP later and I don't want carbon fiber in it. We'll see if FL Sun likes me saying that. And insofar as like criticisms or things that maybe I don't like about the machine uh, thus far, again, I've only had it for a day. It is large. I know that's not a big deal for a lot of people. It's not really a big deal for me. I've got room here that I can place these printers, but if you're running in a confined space, this printer is quite large. What are we looking at here? So this printer's right at 40 and some change tall. It's pretty big width you know, basically two feet wide. So it's gonna take up a big footprint wherever you uh, need to put it, you need to have the space. The other thing too is in the documentation, it said straight out of the gate, put glue stick on the bed. And so that's what I did. If you've watched my channel, you know, I don't like putting anything on my build plates. All my other printers are PEI sheets and I don't like putting anything on them whatsoever. This one, it just said to do it right out of the gate. And I was like, okay, so I went ahead and did it. I did notice the noise level is significantly lower than the T1 Pro, especially with the door closed. It's also got the, uh, the air filtration and the cooling in here. So I believe with PLA, you can keep the door closed. On the T1 Pro, it recommends that you leave the door open if you're printing with PLA. I do like the touch screen here. It's certainly an upgrade from the T1 Pro. It's much more, it's much larger for big fat fingers like mine. Another super duper cool thing too, is if you're recording time lapses on here, you can actually go in and watch the time lapse on the machine as well. Uh, it shows you the time lapse all the way through. So that for me, I mean, I, I make videos, so, and I'm often putting time lapses in as eye candy. So that's pretty cool to kind of see which files, which, or whatever, just to kind of preview it and see. This machine's also advertised as having AI uh, detection, failure detection and whatnot. Now I didn't have it turned on because if you go in here, it will automatically detect filament uh, clogs or power off or zoom, but also it has by default turned off uh, debris detection and spaghetti detection. So on my second Robo Alpaca, I tried to print, it was after printing some other things and I guess the glue needs to be reapplied again. I'm not very familiar with putting glue on sheets, uh, but I didn't have these turned on. I didn't apply glue and that second one did fail. I stopped it, the machine didn't stop it, but these were turned off. So that's something it says that here, uh, this feature is under testing and may have false reports refer to the manual. Um, so that's something that I guess they're working on and maybe in future updates, they'll kind of refine that AI detection a little bit better. Uh, uh, but it is nice to have and know that it's uh, capable of doing that. So this machine's absolutely gonna make it into my daily repertoire of you know print 3D printing things. And it's really, really nice to know that I have a machine that can just handle anything I throw at it. If I really need to print in an exotic material, uh, then I can do that. Uh, you know, I know that if I get carbon fiber, it's not like I'm looking around which printer can do it. I know this one's gonna be able to do it. I know I'm gonna be able to dry stuff out. The only thing I can see people not liking about it is the price. It is an expensive printer. It's $1,600, which is certainly a lot more than most printers. Uh, you know, you're getting up to Arnstorm Giga levels there. 
uh, but it's super duper capable. And I don't know many other printers that can do what this printer does um, kind of all in one at the speed it does it. And you know, certainly you could buy a bunch of different printers that do all those different things and have them kind of strewn out. Uh, but it is nice to have it all in one package. So subscribe to the channel if you want to follow along in the process and see me use this thing uh, ongoing. I'll certainly be featuring it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. How's that price tag sitting with you, bud? Huh? I know there's a lot of rich dudes out there that like 3D printing. Maybe they like this. And if you are one of those rich dudes, visit every link in the description below. I want commissions. Bagnostic of the price. Let me know what you think in the comments below about this machine. If you think like, you know, based on all these specs, if it's good, if it's bad, if it's for you, if you'd recommend it to somebody, if you have experience with Delta printers in general, just let me know anything in the comments. If you like this video, press the like button below and be sure to subscribe to the channel for more content like this. I'm The Technicals, see you next time.